Could you first define what energy decentralization means and how is that different from the centralized systems that are prevalent today? You know, for 100 years we've had power systems that have been centralized. The power plant is out in a remote location and the power travels from there to our homes and businesses. And the idea of decentralization is basically to spread it out, to generate power closer to where we use it from all the sorts of different sources. I mean, a great corollary, frankly, is the internet, uh, decentralizing our computing power and letting everybody have a piece of the pie. John Farrell from uh, the uh, Institute for Local Self-Reliance. That's an issue, this net metering issue of selling electricity back to the, the utility. We just have uh, 30, 45 seconds or so here, but just kind of explain that issue as in a nugget way so that we understand it, if you could. If I succeed, I might be the first person to <laughs> do it in 45 be. seconds. <laughs> it I might think. be unfair to you. Farrell's group has a calculator on its website to help you figure out the cost of owning versus leasing solar panels. For example, in Chicago, Illinois, not particularly the sunniest city around, but you could save over the 30-year life of a solar panel about $6,200 were you to own that system outright. Um, you know, one of the primary motivators of the Minneapolis Energy Options campaign was to say how much money do we spend collectively as a city on these energy services and how much of that is actually leaving the city of Minneapolis? Not all at once. And, and ultimately I keep coming back to uh, you know, Accenture, the consulting company, put out a report in December and said there's essentially $48 billion on the table over the next decade that utilities might lose in terms of revenue to distributed renewable energy and energy efficiency. And I flip that around and immediately think, well, that's the, the opportunity for the electric customer. That's their opportunity in terms of distributed energy, in terms of energy efficiency. And it really is all about our responsibility to figure out how do we change the rules to let that electric customer capture that opportunity. So in the past, we have the cost of solar was far higher than its value uh, to, the, uh, to the electric grid, uh, but also far higher than the retail energy price. And so we made solar work. Uh, we, we got the deployment we wanted to drive down the cost by using taxpayer-funded subsidies like the investment tax credit uh, to make solar economical or state-based and, and utility-based rebate policies. And what this meant then ultimately was that because those dramatically drove down the cost of solar, solar customers were often providing more value to the grid than they got paid for. What's interesting about this in particular to me, having spent a little bit of time with this whole issue, is that the states that allow power purchase agreements tend to be those in which solar is most economic anyways, because of a fairly good solar resource or fairly high electricity prices. And there, so what does energy democracy look like in action? This is my very bad clip art uh, style uh, vision, but the idea is that we, we take on that one of that central pieces of uh, the utility 2.0 conversation about how